Good Friday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, we'll be focusing in on the extreme heat with heat index values in excess of 110 degrees Fahrenheit across the Southern Plains and especially into Texas the next few days. Rounds of severe storms with damaging winds, hail, and tornadoes will be possible rumbling across the Central Plains, the Northern Plains, the Upper Midwest, and eventually to the Ohio Valley through this weekend. And new news guys tropical storm cindy forms this is one for the record books as well as it becomes the first time ever two tropical storms have formed east of the lesser antilles in the month of june so definitely something to talk about there in today's video but first up, we're talking about the extreme heat. We have widespread heat alerts, even some red flag warnings all across the Four Corners region and the orange here into central and southern Texas. Those are heat advisories and also excessive heat watches and warnings across the southern plains as well. And this is all in control with a high pressure system anchored across the Rio Grande Valley and into northern Mexico as of today with a classic omega blocking pattern as we have another high pressure system up here into eastern Canada. So we have a low pressure off to the west coast and the east coast with two high pressure systems in the middle here. That is an omega blocking pattern through this weekend. And looking here today, these are definitely some stifling heat index values. Look at this, 105 to as much as 115 down here toward the Corpus Christi region in Texas today uh, as we get into this afternoon, and even some 90s for heat index values further north into Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana. It's not going to be much better for you guys. It's going to be a summertime heat going into this afternoon, but it spreads northward into Oklahoma. So even though it's not into the triple digits, the heat index today, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, the Lawton area. Yeah, we're getting into 110, 115 degree territory for our heat index on Saturday. And that continues into Sunday as it even spreads further east into Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Louisiana, and even some extent southeastern Missouri as well with those widespread triple digits heat index values going into Sunday, June 25th. So definitely something to watch. Well, with all the heat building to the south, it is definitely feeling rounds of severe storms on the northern periphery of all of that heat. We have an enhanced risk of severe storms from the Storm Prediction Center here highlighted across eastern Wyoming, southwestern South Dakota, and to northwestern portions of Nebraska and even a slight risk further to the south across the southern plains here into northwest Texas, the Texas Panhandle, and southwestern Oklahoma this afternoon. And this is highlighted by some very large hail. We could be seeing up to three-inch diameter hail up here across the northwestern high plains. We also have a threat for tornadoes, especially up here as well into Wyoming, southwestern South Dakota, western portions of Nebraska, and northeastern portions of Colorado this afternoon and then this will transition more to an MCS or a mesoscale convective system as it propagates from west to east across South Dakota and Nebraska and eventually into far western Iowa during that early Saturday morning time frame so that will be something to watch for widespread hurricane force wind gust potential with winds over 75 miles per hour going into that time frame so breaking this down here um, every few hours you see early this evening we're definitely watching for some scattered supercells very large hail potential two to three inches in diameter hail and a few tornadoes during the early evening hours yes damaging winds will also be in play but as we go through later on this evening we're going to start to become more numerous with the coverage of our storms here from South Dakota all the way south here into the Rio Grande Valley here, or just north of the Rio Grande Valley toward the Red River. That's where we're going to be seeing some of the storms firing up with some severe weather. And then the, mes uh, the MCS, the Mesoscale Convective System, will push from west to east across Nebraska, South Dakota, and eventually into southwest Minnesota, western Iowa through the Omaha, Lincoln region here as we get into early Saturday morning. Watch out for wide spread damaging winds in excess of 70 miles per hour and some hail, very heavy rain, and also a couple embedded tornadoes. Something to watch out for there. But a pattern change is in the offing here across the upper Midwest in the Ohio Valley. If you're tired of the dry weather like me, well, we have a little bit of some improvements ahead 
with that side of things here as the ridge down to the south is going nowhere but the northern periphery of the ridge we have an upper level disturbance rounding that northern periphery on Saturday into Sunday providing us with some active weather but unfortunately it does coincide with some severe weather as well so on Saturday there's a slight risk from southern Minnesota down through the Des Moines region into Iowa northern portions of Missouri and far western Illinois on Saturday this does include the threat for mainly very very large hail two to three inches in diameter especially into the Des Moines region as we get into Saturday and the threat for tornadoes is highest around the Des Moines region on Saturday as well so something to keep an eye on the MCS or mesoscale convective system pushing out of Nebraska and South Dakota into central Iowa will be on a weakening trend. Remember, we have that high pressure system across eastern Canada and as that starts to influence more of the sinking air across portions of the western Great Lakes and parts of the lower Midwest, as that MCS moves into the western side of that, we're going to start to see more of this start to fall apart into Saturday morning, but it will likely leave some outflow boundaries during the afternoon, so we'll start to see scattered to numerous thunderstorms to developing back up across central eastern Iowa into southwest Wisconsin during Saturday afternoon and that will propagate across southern Wisconsin, northern and central Illinois and eventually into the Ohio Valley region overnight Saturday night into early Sunday morning. And oh yeah, as we go into Sunday, the severe weather threat and the frontal boundary moves further off to the east and southeast. More severe weather for the Ohio Valley down into the Tennessee Valley and the Mid-South and including the threat for some significant hail and winds as well across portions of Kentucky into northwestern Tennessee on Sunday and that shifts even further east on Monday across Virginia into the Carolinas with another slight risk for severe weather there as we start the new work week next week. We're looking at the total rainfall accumulation now through Wednesday on June 28th during the middle of next week. This is where all the rainfall will be over top of that ridge uh, across the Dakotas, Nebraska, up here into Minnesota and Wisconsin, and then rounding the northeastern periphery of the ridge across southeastern Canada, the Great Lakes region, the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast. All these areas will be seeing some beneficial rains through the early and middle portion of next week. And it is great news to see the rain. And we can take anything we can get because we have widespread, moderate, and severe drought, and even extreme pockets of drought developing here across the northeast, northeast portions of the Ohio Valley, the upper Midwest, and the central plains over the last update from the drought monitor. So we definitely need the rainfall here further to the north. Well, turning to the tropics here, we are seeing history in the making, or at least history is in the making here for the record books. We see the first time ever in the month of June, two systems developing to the east of the Lesser Antilles at the same time as tropical storms, and that has never happened. Happened before we have Tropical Storm Brett now crossing over the Lesser Antilles here today. And then you have Tropical Storm Cindy that has just formed just well to the east of the Lesser Antilles as well. And looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies... There's no surprise that this did happen. We had a couple of strong tropical waves pushing off of Africa out here and further to the west, and it has no shortage of fuel to grow here. We have widespread sea surface temperatures very much in the hot category here, and we are seeing tropical storm Brett starting to push further to the west. It will remain mainly over the open waters of the Caribbean and kind of weakening more to a tropical depression as it moves closer to the Central Americas and actually believe it or not this will feed into next week's potential for tropical development into the eastern Pacific side as Brett crosses over the Central Americas into the eastern Pacific Basin as well we'll talk about that in just a minute but looking at Cindy Cindy will take more of a northwesterly track here and remain a tropical storm at least through Sunday evening before dropping back to potential depression status as we get into early and middle portion of next week, approaching the Bermuda region and maybe the eastern Bahamas by the time we get to that Wednesday or Thursday time frame. So we'll continue to watch that. But both of these systems are likely not a threat to the United States. So that is some good news there. Looking at the Eastern Pacific Basin, we still have that 80% chance of development likely just to the southwest of Mexico. And that is likely into the early and middle portion of next week. Widespread hot sea surface temperatures as well across the Eastern Pacific Basin. And the, e uh, the ECMWF or the European forecast model by the middle of next week on Wednesday, June 28th, 
does have a tropical storm, if not a low-end hurricane, developing just to the west of Mexico over the open waters here. The GFS a little bit more bullish here with a couple of hurricanes trying to develop here during the middle of next week. And also the Canadian model or the CMC model guidance is showing that to some extent as well. So that is something we'll watch over the Eastern Pacific Basin over the coming days. But if you do like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics, now is the time to press the subscribe button down below. It's absolutely free to do, and I post these mostly every single day throughout the week. And it's very important to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. It does help out more than you know, so I appreciate that as well. If you want to follow me on Twitter for additional weather forecast updates, hit the description down below the video. Follow me on Twitter at hweather420. I post on there fairly frequently throughout the week with my videos and other updates on the weather forecast as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, supporting the channel as always. Have a great rest of your Friday, everybody, and I will see you all in the next video.